What's up guys, I'm Chicks and you're watching Chicks Tech Reviews. And today I've got my hands on a very unique Android TV box, which has a HDMI input for split screen viewing and a built in 2.5 inch hard drive caddy so you can expand your storage. So this is the latest B-Link SEA1 Android TV box. So as usual, we begin with a quick unboxing followed by a series of tests testing 4K video, HD streaming, gaming and finishing off with a benchmark and Wi-Fi test. So let's begin with the specs. I'll put the specs on the screen so you guys can have a quick read. The CPU is the Realtek 1295 quad core running at 1.5 GHz. The GPU is the Mali T820. You've got 2 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth version 4, Android version 6 Marshmallow. This supports Ultra HD 4K videos at 60 frames per second, supports HDR10 and HLG HDR. So this is everything you get in the box, beginning with an instruction manual or a very small quick start guide, a power adapter. This looks like a European power adapter, so I would have to use one of these. I should do the trick. HDMI cable and the B-Link C1 itself. Wow, very nice design. So as you can see, you've got a matte finish on the top with the B-Link logos and some of the features that this TV box provides. Quite a unique design and quite slim as well. At the front you have an LED display, if we keep going. On the back you have a power socket, your optical out, your network LAN port. So you have a HDMI in and an out. The out is your regular HDMI port which allows you to plug this to a standard TV. The unique port here is the HDMI in. So this will allow you to plug your games console, your tablet or smartphone. You plug it in via HDMI and then you'll be able to simultaneously display two videos on one screen. So we'll be testing that out to see what that's about. It's something unique that I haven't seen before. If we keep going, so you've got a USB 3 port, USB 2 port and a full size SD card slot. And we're back to the front again. This is what the bottom of the unit looks like. Here's another unique feature of this um, Android TV box. This part comes off. Inside here you can see a SATA connection. So you can insert your own 2.5mm hard drive. Here is mine. I had to take the screws off, the four screws on the side. And now this will go in very nicely. So you slot it in. That's it. Clicked in. All done. So I've got my hard drive installed in there and I look forward to testing that out. Um, so you've got a nice light and slim design even with the 2.5 inch hard drive in there it still doesn't feel too heavy. Now to compare the size I'm going to bring in the H96 Max just to give you guys an idea of how big this is. You can see how big that is. And in thickness it's virtually the same. So I'm going to get this all hooked up and we're going to find out how good this box performs. I'll be right back. So the B-Link C1 Android TV box will not allow me to use this capture card. Okay, so this is my regular capture card. It won't allow capture cards. It's got some sort of securities in place. I've never seen that in a TV box so far. So I'm going to have to record this the old fashioned way, pointing the camera directly to the TV. So let's begin. So this is the home screen for the B-Link C1. The home screen has the date, the time, and the weather on the left, as soon as you connect to Wi-Fi, all of that information will just update automatically. You've got a clear memory section at the bottom left. You've got the app drawer there, file manager, settings, the Google Play Store. You've got the web browser and a HDMI in. We'll talk about this function a little bit later. So if we keep scrolling to the left, you'll have a shortcut page there where you can go and add any icon you like from there. Um, and it will just appear on the screen. And if we keep going all the way to the right, you've got another shortcut section. And the same thing, you can add whatever shortcut you like there. You're also able to customize the My Favorite section. So you just click on that and you can add whichever app you like in there. And it will just appear on your My Favorite section. All of these existing icons are fixed. You cannot customize them. Um, you've only got these areas that I've mentioned where you can add your own icons. So let's go to System Settings and have a look at the System Storage. So you've got 32 gigs of internal storage in this box. 8.49 gigs are being used by system resources, leaving you with just over 23 gigs available to use. 
So let's come back out. So this drive over here, which says 466 GB, that is my 2.5 inch SATA drive that we installed in the beginning. This second drive, which says 30 gigs, that's my USB flash drive, which I'm going to play all my 4K video samples from later on. Okay, so that's the system storage. Now let's go and have a look at the app drawer and see what apps you get as standard. So these are your standard apps. I've not installed anything yet. These are This is what you get on the system as standard. So you got something called BeLive, Camera, Chrome. So you got all the basics. You got Kodi, that's their own version of, of Kodi Media Center. And we'll check that out in a second. And this also supports Miracast. And of course, you've got the full version of the Google Play Store. So you can download any app you like. So let's open up BeLive. So BeLive is a private cloud app. Install the app on your smartphone and you'll be able to share stuff from your smartphone directly to the TV box. So that's that's what BeLive is. We've got Miracast. So any second now this should screen mirror. As you can see I'm mirroring my Xiaomi MI6 smartphone and it's working great. If I go to settings sorry about the brightness and all that. But this is uh, I haven't got a capture card at the moment. So screen mirroring works fine. So let's have a quick look at this Kodi. So this is Kodi based on Kodi 17.2 and you can do all your regular Kodi stuff on this. So let's come out of this right now. Go back to the app drawer. So let's go to media browser and check out that hard drive that we installed in the beginning of the video. So if we go to all files you can see there are three hard drives. Internal storage, that's my USB pen drive and this is that 2.5 inch SATA drive. So let's open the SATA drive so as you can see, the whole collection comes up and they're all mostly MKVs and MP4s. So if I just play something, just to see how it would play, let's actually play an MKV. And there you go. It's playing absolutely fine. I'm just going to try and forward it a bit. Okay, can't show you too much of that. So there you go, it works fine. I'll try a 1080p clip. So what's awesome about this, you can have your entire movie collection on the built-in hard drive. And as you saw, it played everything nice and fast and it recognized all the formats. Moving on now, let's try out some 4K samples from a USB drive. So if I open up Media Browser again, go to All Files and this time I'm going to go to USB Drive. So these are my 4K video samples. Let's go ahead and play the first one. So there you have it guys, that was playing 4K video samples from a USB drive. So moving on now to the YouTube test. So as you can see, the maximum resolution available on YouTube is 1080p. Of these conversations, we do them in stages. Stage one, witnesses. Stage two, suspects. What happened in the You told me Bianca was not a problem anymore. Bianca isn't a problem anymore. That's his problem. Found Bianca at the mock. Touch it. I live here in Columbus, Ohio. In 2045, it's still ranked the fastest growing city on Earth. But it sure doesn't seem like it when you live in the stacks. So that was the YouTube test. 1080p played very nicely. Let's move on now to some gaming tests. So now I'm going to briefly show you guys what HDMI in is. 
So basically in the HDMI in port on the TV box, I have plugged in my PlayStation 3. So if I click on HDMI in, you will see my PlayStation right there. So now the options you have is you can record what's going on on the PlayStation 3 right now. You can start PIP, which is picture in picture, and that's what PIP is. So you can see the PlayStation 3 in the bottom right hand corner, and you can carry on doing stuff on your Android TV box. So you could effectively play a game on the side um, and watch a film at the same time. Even though that doesn't sound too practical, but it, it can be done. So you could be watching this trailer and you could be you know, playing a game at the same time. If you wanted to make the screen bigger and not picture in picture, you can just go straight to the image, click OK. And there's your PlayStation 3 and you can play whatever game you want as normal. So it's quite awesome. So that's the new HDMI in feature. So here are the results for the Wi-Fi speed test. We've got download speeds of 9.64 megabits per second and upload speeds of 9.90 megabits per second. And I've got a 20 meg broadband connection at home. So in the Antutu benchmark test, the B-Link achieved a total benchmark score of 38,404. So let's see how that compares to the others. So this is my top benchmark performance chart. This chart simply shows you which are the highest overall performing boxes. However, when choosing a TV box, you must also consider other factors such as the home screen, Android version, size, appearance, and of course, the price. So as you can see, the B-Link C1 has jumped straight into position three with an amazing benchmark score of 38,404. It'll be interesting to see which TV box I review next and what overall performance it will get. Please be aware the prices shown are just a guideline as they are constantly changing on a daily basis. So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link C1 TV box. This is the latest Android TV box by B-Link and has a brand new CPU which I'm using for the first time, the impressive Realtek 1295 CPU which is a quad core running at 1.5 GHz. This is a great all-round TV box with plenty of storage and comes with DDR4 RAM. Overall performance for gaming, 4K movies and streaming online was simply outstanding. I experienced no lag or issues whilst testing this box and I love the fact that you can add a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive filled with your movie collection and all movie formats are recognised and play very well. Bottom line, for the price you're getting a great all-round performing box which can do it all. And with that being said, I'll leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out. And if you like it, you can of course go ahead and purchase one for yourselves. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day.